Hi everyone. This week on the channel, I'm going to take the time to focus on true stories. Now, there are so many true stories going around these days, but how do we really know that they're true? Well, the stories I've chosen for you this week are fully verifiable and backed up with evidence. Join me, my dear friends, by making sure you're sitting back and relaxing with your favorite drink, because it's time to listen. My dad accidentally solved a murder. Spring 2014 was a slow season for my father's business. The weather was nice and the roads were clear, which meant slow shifts at an auto shop. It was mid-April, around 4pm. The wind was pulling in a nice spring breeze when my dad, Bill, was walking along the side of his shop. He'd happened to overlook a small stream and running trail, which he enjoyed gazing at near the end of his shift. The side of his building ran along the top of a steep hill, which turned into the path. He heard a ruffling in the wind, and about halfway down the hill, he saw a big blue tarp. Being very proud of his business and its appearance, he started to climb down the hill. He was just about to grab for it, it was about 15 feet away, and toss it in the dump when he saw a car pull into the lot. He turned around and went to help his customer. When 5.30pm rolled around, he closed up and went home, forgetting the tarp. The next afternoon, Bill was sitting in his office when three policemen came in. They asked my father and co-workers a bunch of questions about any suspicious behavior they might have seen. Okay, as a side note, my dad is extremely charismatic and friendly. He oftentimes talks people into sharing information with him that they really shouldn't. He looks like someone you can trust, <laughs> and you can. And he seems to always have the insider details about things like this. He uses humor to make people feel comfortable, which helps getting strangers to open up to him. Anyway, Bill and his co-worker Hank were talking with a female police officer when she let it slip that a body had just been discovered down the hill. Oh shit, I was down there yesterday cleaning. I didn't see anybody though, Bill said. Around what time? Did you happen to see a large blue and white tarp while you were cleaning the area? She asked intently. Uh, actually, yeah. I almost grabbed it yesterday, but I ended up getting distracted. She asked him more questions about what time, what he saw, and so on. When he asked her if the body was found in the tarp. <laughs> Yes, it was. A woman jogging found it this morning around 10.30 a.m. My dad was floored. He'd just been there the day before. After a few more questions, the police all headed to the crime scene to finish the initial investigation. No one was allowed on the scene, and the police were asking that passers-by not take any pictures. Luckily for you guys, my dad took one from his office window. You can see near the top of his picture the running trail. Just in front of that is part of the creek that's dried up. There are the officers and such, searching for whatever they were searching for. You could also see, just left of the officer, in black, a teeny shade of blue. That would be the tarp. Flash forward a few days. The police went back to my father's shop. 
They noticed the security cameras set up around the building, and they were hoping that they might catch something on tape. While transferring the data over, my dad started asking more questions about the murder. He learned that it was a middle-aged man that had been stabbed to death. Hmm, not much to go on, or so it seemed. Hey, you know there are a couple of meth heads that live in this shack behind our shop. It's connected to that bar. Bill started talking about his own predictions for whodunit scenarios. He continued. Yeah, we have lots of problems with them. Stealing scrap metal from the back. Letting their dogs run wild. Even had him threaten to shoot me once, when I was spraying their dogs with water to quit the barking. You should check them out. The officer nodded, gathered the rest of his things, and left. Hey Hank, let's go down there. See if we can find anything cool, my father whispered to his co-worker. Um, alright, I guess it couldn't do any harm, Hank replied, hesitantly. They started down the hill, where the trench was found. The grass was flat, and the tarp was now gone. They walked around for 15 or so minutes, when Bill headed up the stream a little ways. The trail runs under a main road, and then leads to a man-made lake. Just under the bridge, the water starts to get heavier, and the trees are a bit thicker. He noticed a red Lowe's cart next to one of the trees. I'm taking that for the shop, he thought, as he ran over to pull it out of the stream. Calling over Hank for help, the two of them pulled it out and started wheeling it back up the hill. Suddenly, my dad stopped. He's seen something in the cart. What is that rusty looking stuff? Hank, stop. Look at that fucking cart. Is that blood? They look closer, and sure enough, blood. It was all over the cart. On the handle, on the wheels, and the sides. But it wasn't only blood they started to notice. There was hair. Human hair. Utterly stunned, my dad called the policewoman he'd been talking to the previous day and explained what they found. For whatever reason, the police department were very skeptical that this was evidence. At first, they didn't even believe my father. When he told them it made no sense to make it up, they sent out a car. There were two police officers and a CSI. The CSI asked my dad why he thought this was blood. <laughs> it looks like blood, sir. Hmm, I'm not sure. How do you know that this is human hair? The CSI asked. Because it looks like human hair, my dad snapped sarcastically. Why did he seem so hesitant? They used a chemical test and, sure enough, it tested positive for human blood. They took the card as evidence and thanked my dad. Again, my dad tried to give his opinion on who the mystery killer might be. He suggested, again, that they talk with the crazy neighbors behind his auto shop. Still, no information was taken down and they left with what they had. Two more days passed. My dad was leaving the shop to get some things from Costco. Now, there's a small dirt alley that leads to the main road, just behind his work. In the past, it had been blocked by one of the other meth addict's cars. They were complaining to my dad and his boss about the business driving cars back and forth through the alley, disrupting them. He noticed it was open and decided to take the shortcut to his destination. But something was off. 
he saw the usual blocked car sitting in front of the shack. The door was wide open, and there was someone sitting on their knees with their upper body inside the car. He got inside his car and crept up, just a little, so he could see what was happening. He right away recognized the skinny, red-headed woman as the female that lived in the shack. It was the shack guy's wife or girlfriend. He didn't know exactly. She was on her hands and knees, surrounded with hard chemicals. Bleach, Comet, OxyClean, and much more. My dad said he knew right then that they were guilty. For one... Why would they be scrubbing their car with straight chemicals? No water, no rinsing. It was the middle of the day on a hot, hot June afternoon. Second, they happened to be only two blocks away from a local car wash. He said it felt off, and he knew to trust his instincts. She just kept scrubbing and scrubbing the passenger side floor. He pulled out his phone and started recording her. Now, he'd known this woman for a few years, and, like I said, they complained about my father's workers, and he complained about their dogs, on and off all the time. It was all harmless bickering. My dad, always trying to be the funny guy, yelled out of his window as he was driving past. <laughs> Covering up a murder? He laughed and drove away, hearing her say, fuck you, as he drove off. This time, when he called the police, they took it very seriously. He explained that she was cleaning the car aggressively, and that it seemed like she was trying to bleach something out of the car. The next day, the police department went by to talk with the residents of the shack. The day after that, they made an arrest. After searching the shack, they found a large blood stain soaked into the plywood floor. Once the blood had been seen, the woman crumbled and told the police everything. It was her, her husband, and the victim. The victim was named Rich. He'd gone over to their little house to shoot up and get high. Someone ended up accusing Rich of putting some of the dope aside for himself, and things got heated. Eventually, the husband started to physically fight with Rich, and that's when he stabbed him. He bled out on the floor and died. They didn't know what to do, so they stole the Lowe's cart to move him around, loaded him into the car, wrapped him in the tarp, and pushed his body down the hill. They ditched the cart, thinking the river would wash it down far enough that it wouldn't be found. My dad and Hank sat in their car while they watched the police arrest Don, the man, the suspected murderer. He took a video of that as well. <laughs> My dad now says he's going to start a private investigation business. <laughs> Yeah, right. All because he served a murder. All on his own.